Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. Noco actually sent me out this GB70 boost pack to do a video review on a little while ago, and I've been checking it out. And I've got to say, this is this thing is a rock star. It's one of the best products that I've ever been sent to review. I would review this thing even if they didn't send it to me, even if I paid my own money for this. Um, it costs about 150 bucks, at least for this version. And they gave me the option. I could have gotten the GB40 if I wanted to. That one's a little cheaper. That one, I probably should have gone for that because that's the one that everybody would buy because it's a little bit cheaper. I just wanted to get the one that had a greater capacity because I knew I would forget to recharge the thing in as I use it but you know a lot of people have done reviews on these and you know some people have taken these apart and you know they've been like oh yeah there's a lithium battery inside there and then other people have you know they've they've gone to the whiteboard and they've they've debunked the whole 15,700 joules over three seconds claim and then the whole you know 2,000 amps claim they've debunked all that and whatever you know that's marketing wank you know I've, I've always understood ever since i've owned like you know ever since i bought like a hundred watt stereo system i knew it wasn't delivering 100 watts that was the peak wattage that it would deliver it, would, it was always going to be delivering about one third of what the marketing would claim I've, I've understood that for a little while now so i'm not really too upset that the marketing wank isn't exactly up to snuff what i care about is does this thing work in real world conditions and how many times can it work? How many times can you jumpstart a car and all that? So I've been using this thing. I didn't just run out and do a review the second I got this. I, I hung back and I used the product several times. I used it until I ran the battery dead and then I charged it back up and used it again just to get a whole bunch of experience. Anyway, let me, uh, before I get to all that, let me show you just how the, a couple of functions about the product. Let's go through and see what's in the box and then we'll, I'll take you through how the product works and then I'll tell you about my experiences with it. So let's get started. So this is pretty much everything that comes in the box. You get a nice storage bag, as you can see, nice and dirty already because I've been keeping this thing in my car where I would normally keep it. You get a little cell phone cable. It's just a little cell phone charging cable type of thing, little mini USB. You get a little user manual, which I've been keeping in the bag. You of course get the Genius Boost, and then you get this cable as well as this adapter and you can normally store these adapters together kind of like that so this cable is actually sort of a, a two-in-one kind of a thing you can change which end of the cable you want to use so if i wanted to be able to plug you know some kind of a cigarette lighter device into the jump pack you can then just use the cord this way plug this into the in i believe actually oh, this would be the out right <laughs> because we're looking for 12 volts out so that's going to give me 12 volts out now if i want to charge this thing using the cigarette lighter adapter in my car or the cigarette lighter you know the cigarette lighter port in my car you switch the cable around and then you plug this into the in so now you're sending 12 volts into the boost pack and that's the fastest way to charge it because uh, you get you're, you're actually charging with 12 volts rather than you know the five volts you would get out of the wall with this cable um, and I forget the amperage but it's going to be higher amps than you're ever going to get with uh, with you know a phone charger speaking of that they do not include the actual uh, port the actual charger for you to be able to use this cord and plug the thing into the wall so you have to kind of provide your own um, it's just a cell phone charger you know like everybody has these already so i kind of you know it, it does seem like they're cheaping out on that but honestly i i don't need yet another cell phone charger if i ever do need to charge this in the house i'm just going to use my cell phone charger that's already plugged into the wall and i'm just going to plug my cell phone charger into the noco and charge it up so you would just you know plug it in there and then you're charging the thing up overnight um, you can also charge it off the computer you know you can just go usb to usb if you want if you have uh you know the, you can just plug the micro usb cable into a usb port on your computer charge it that way you can also use the noco to power to charge up your cell phone if you want to go that way so if you uh you can you can do usb out and then you can just plug that in your cell phone charging your cell phone overnight so that's pretty cool as well the noco itself um, has a light you have to turn it on first so it actually has a built-in light with three settings the blink you know, a couple different settings of blink so if you're on the side of the road and you need to signal for help you got that option 
So when you have the NOCO on, you're gonna see how much uh, charge it has left in it. As you can see, I'm, I'm about 50% because of course I've forgotten to charge the thing. I always forget to take it out of the trunk and bring it in and charge it up overnight. But the nice thing is that even with 50% charge, this thing has a lot of charges left in it. Let me go ahead and show you how you use it. So the NOCO is real easy to use. You just hook it up to the negative and positive terminals on your dead battery. Yeah, you can hook it up directly to the terminals. Um, normally, you know, when you're hooking up jumper cables, when you hook up to the dead battery, you want to hook the, the positive cable to the dead battery and then the negative cable to a negative part of the engine just for safety. But with the NOCO, we're hooking it up when it's not turned on. So these cables are not live yet. So we can hook them directly to the battery. Just pretend that this is a battery right here. I have a BMW so in the batteries in the trunk. So these are my battery terminals here in the engine compartment. So now that we've got it hooked up, we got positive on positive and negative on negative. Just go ahead and turn it on. If the NOCO can detect your battery, if your battery has just died, it still has some voltage in it, but not enough to actually start the car, the NOCO will detect that and it'll go into the sort of intelligent or the smart mode. This is mode number one with the NOCO. You'll see the lights flash like this in this pattern. That means that it's detected the battery, it's putting out some helper voltage, and you know, you're now ready to go ahead and start the car. And I'll tell you what, it works every time. Now, if you have the situation where your battery is completely dead, you're trying to start a battery, a completely dead battery on a car that's been sitting forever, you're gonna actually have to get into override mode. You can't get into override mode when we're in this situation, when it can detect that there's a good battery there. And so in order to get in that override mode, I've got to disconnect from the battery and just pretend that you know you guys can just pretend we're hooked up to a completely dead battery at this point you hold down the red button with the exclamation point and it goes into override mode and that's when this white light is blinking this is when it's just dumping out full power into the cables right now if we were to touch the cables on something or touch them together they would spark because it's dumping full power onto the cables this is complete override mode. You can go ahead and start the car at this point with your fully dead battery. The car will start and you're all good. So when I first got this thing, I charged it up, I threw it in the trunk, and the first time I had the occasion to use it was when I went to install a radio in my best friend's 97 Jetta. Turned out her battery was almost dead. It had one start left in it, then the radio started going all crazy, and I went online and figured out, oh, the battery's dead, and that's why it's not starting now. So I used this jump pack to actually restart it about five or six times that day as I did the, the various repairs on it and figured out how to bypass the alarm and all that. Um, so. I used it for that and then I didn't charge it and then I loaned it to her boyfriend and he used it to jumpstart his Crown Victoria because it happened to have a dead battery too about a week later. He used it about six or seven times just to get to work because he was too lazy to go get a battery or something like that. He used it a bunch of times. I got it back. I still didn't charge it. It was, a, it was down to about 75% capacity at that point. That was, that's quite a few charges. Now keep in mind, or jump starts, keep in mind that th that was only on the first mode where it can detect that the battery is there. The battery is just a little bit too weak to start the car. So the, the jump pack works with the battery in order to jump start the car. In other words, it doesn't provide 100% of the power to do the, each jump start. And when you use it like that, you get more jump starts out of it. Um, so after that, I didn't charge it, 75% charge. The next time I used it was when we went to get Project Black Savage from where it was. You know, it was sitting there for a while. Um, all four tires were flat. We had a U-Haul trailer that we needed to pull it up onto. And we had one of those 12 volt electric winches. We used this thing to power it, which I don't think you're supposed to do. You're only supposed to use this thing to actually charge uh, or to, to jumpstart a car real quick. So you're only supposed to use it in bursts. We use this thing constantly in the override mode to power that electric winch and it pulled the car all the way up onto the trailer. And uh, we kind of exhausted it at that point. It was down to about 25%. And uh, yeah, so this thing was quite the rock star on that first initial charge. I was really surprised. I had no idea how much capacity I would get out of it, but I got way more than I was ever expecting. Anyway, I charged it up. Next time we used it, we used it in full override mode. There was, my friend had a, was storing a Corvette in his backyard. So that's a Chevy 350 engine. And the battery was totally dead. We needed to move it from his backyard to go out on the street and move it to his front yard in order to do the, the, front, the oil change on his driveway. And we used it a couple of times to jumpstart the car because the car kept dying as we were moving it. Finally, we figured out that, you know, there was no, uh, there was no more fuel in the car. So he went and got some fuel. I left this with him and he told me he used it several more times. Um, and yeah, so that was at least 
15 full power jump starts. So that would be the second mode, the override mode. It had about 15 full jump starts. And I believe when I got it back, it was around the 50% range. So yeah, this thing has a lot of capacity in it. I was pleasantly surprised. And uh, yeah, so that's why I highly recommend it. I was just, I was really surprised at how much capacity it has. I highly recommend that you grab, you know, one of these, these boost packs. If you can't afford the $150 GB70 version, then just grab the, the $75 GB40 version. I think that will have quite a few jump starts in it as well. Um, I would be happy if I own that one. I'm happy that I own this one. I highly recommend it to you. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, toss me a subscribe. I'm the 50s Kid. Thanks a lot for watching.